Okay, so we're we're going to look at solving this PDE. Um, this is a conservation law. Um, here uh, we have u partial derivative with respect to time, and then some function of u, and then taking the derivative with respect to x. So here, this derivative with respect to x is applied to the whole function. So if you want, you could write it in this way. Um, u we're assuming to be a function of the spatial variable x and the temporal variable t and x will be uh, a real number and t is some positive real number okay um, so u maps r cross zero infinity to r Okay. Um, f is often called the flunk, flux function, and it's going to map r to r. Okay. Um, so we're not going to solve just for an arbitrary f function. We'll start with the simplest, uh, one of the simplest flux functions. So we're going to take f of u is equal to a times u, okay? And a is some positive number, okay? So our PDE becomes uh, the derivative of u with respect to time plus a times u, uh, a times the derivative of u with respect to x, okay? And this is equal to zero. So again, a is a constant, so when you take the derivative of f, uh, we just get this derivative of u with respect to x, okay? So, all right, so the question is how, how are we going to solve this PDE, okay? Um, so the the way that we're going to do that is something called the method of characteristics. Okay. So with the method of characteristics, the idea is not to solve on just the whole uh, plane, the the r cross zero to infinity. So the whole domain. The idea is we want to look at a you know, a, a single line that resides in the plane, okay? So we're gonna look at our solution just on a characteristic line, okay? So the idea that we do is we assume that our spatial variable is parametrized by the time variable, okay? So x, we're gonna assume x is a function of time. So given any point in time, our spatial variable will change, okay? So this is what we're going to do, okay? And the idea is we're going to essentially consider kind of a dual problem. So we're just going to look at the derivative with respect to t of u of x of t, okay? So here, keep in mind, this is not the partial derivative with respect to the t, this is the total derivative. So we need to apply the chain rule in order to compute this, okay? Um, so if you recall from calculus, the chain rule is gonna be the partial derivative of u with respect to t plus the partial derivative of u with respect to x times the derivative of x with respect to t, since x is a function of t, okay? Um, so, well, this is our derivative. And what we're gonna do is if you notice, what we'll say is if dx dt is equal to a, then the total derivative of u with respect to time is equal to, I'll just write it out one more time, w del t 
plus a del u del x and this is equal to zero this is our PDE our original PDE that we are trying to solve okay and, and again the subscript x and t that's the same as the partial derivatives here that I've written okay so so this gives us a special criteria for what the parameterization of x should be okay so notice let me get another color so red okay so notice if the derivative of x with respect to t is equal to a um, then we have that the derivative of u with respect to t is equal to zero okay so notice this gives us two uh, ordinary differential equations okay so we're just going to solve these ordinary differential equations let's go back to black so the first one dx dt is equal to a let's draw a line here okay so if this is equal to a then just integrating we find that x of t is equal to a times t plus a constant okay and that constant we're going to denote by x sub zero okay so at time uh, at time t equals to zero we have our starting x value okay and what we typically do is we'll look at the x t plane okay so x and t is kind of like the y-axis here so we're going to look at the xt plane um, and in order to to graph this uh, well let's solve for t so if we solve for t we'll get 1 over a times x minus x0 okay so this is this is just the slope of a line okay so the slope is 1 over a and if x is equal to x0 then our our t value is 0 okay so what we can do is take a point on the x-axis and call this x0 and now our line looks something like this okay and notice the slope of the line is 1 over a okay and so no matter what x0 you pick, if you pick this to be your x0, oops, you're going to have a same parallel line, if I can draw parallel. Okay, so these are all parallel lines for whatever x value you choose. Okay, so that's one of the important features of this is that any starting x sub 0, this is going to give us one of these characteristic lines okay and so what we want to think about is what this is saying so that means on this line here okay on one of these characteristic lines the derivative of u with respect to t is zero okay so that means our solution u is constant along this line okay and that might uh, that might not be quite clear it might be kind of confusing what's going on here but we'll draw another picture later on that will um, that will describe this situation uh, in more detail okay so what we have here is our characteristic line and now we're just going to solve our other ODE okay so this other ODE here uh, let me move the screen down okay so we now have du dt is equal to zero and this just implies that u of x of t comma t is equal to some constant okay because uh, keep in mind again we're we're only on this parameterized line okay so this parameterized line x of t this is only when the derivative uh, this is only when our function is constant okay so well we need to determine what 
that value, what that constant is. So, well, we can do, uh, I forgot at the very beginning. Okay, so I left off one important detail at the very beginning, and that is our PDE. So if we have a PDE, we have to have uh, an initial condition. So we need an initial condition. So u of x comma zero, so that time t equals zero, is going to be some function of x. We're gonna call it g, okay? So g is the initial uh, function, okay? So this is what we're gonna use in order to find that constant c for our uh, derivative, uh, sorry, for our solution, okay? So what we do in order to find c, so plug in, t is equal to zero, and we get u of x of zero comma zero. This is equal to g of x of zero, okay? From our initial condition. But what is x of zero? x of zero, if we plug in t for zero, that's just x sub zero. Okay, so this is g of x sub zero, and this is our constant, okay? So our solution our solution is u of x of t comma t is equal to g of x sub zero, okay? And the important feature here is again that x sub zero, that's just the initial starting point. It can be whatever you want it to be, uh, but in particular, we can solve for it here. So we can plug back in x minus a t. Okay, so our solution is g of x minus a t u of x comma t is equal to this, g of x minus a t, okay? And what this is, is this is just a translation of the initial data. Your function stays the same, it just moves as time changes, okay? It's gonna be shifted to the right. So since a is greater than zero, uh, this is a translation of uh, the initial function, translation of g of x to the right, okay? So just to demonstrate this, we're going to look at a three, I'm going to draw a 3D graph to more illustrate what's going on. So here, this is gonna be, this is, oops, oh gosh, I messed everything up. Here we go, okay. So this is our x-axis. And now we're gonna plot the u-axis. Okay, I'm gonna draw it. Um, how should I draw it? Okay, this is our u of x comma t. And I'm gonna draw the time axis going out like so. Okay, so this is t. So at time t equals to zero, we're just gonna have our function g of x, okay? And g of x can be, uh, well, mostly it can be anything we want. Um, but let's just assume it's smooth. Okay, so say our g of x looks, let me draw it a little bit better. Okay, so this is our g of x. Okay, it's got this kind of bump here. And what's gonna happen, so say we go to this point here in time, our function will just be translated to the right, okay, with the speed of a, okay? So we're gonna get another bump here, just the translation. 
And if you keep marching down the time, okay, you, you just keep shifting the graph. Okay, so the graph keeps shifting. Okay, and if you remember, we drew this xt plane up here. Okay, so these are the characteristics where a function is constant. And if we draw these same characteristic lines back in this 3D graph, let me color it in red. So what you'll see here is if you start at the this point here, so say x0 is 0, you'll have this characteristic line. Okay, and granted my lines are not perfectly straight, but this characteristic line is touching the top of the hill at each point. So you notice that this peak of the hill is not changing along this line. It's always the same. Okay, And that's going to hold true for any other point. Say you took, um, say you took this point here. Okay, and this point's going to touch the sides of these lines here. Okay, and so now you can see this, this is the same constant characteristic line. Okay, so this is the idea of the methods of characteristics. Um, and this is just for the simple equation here. Okay where your flux function is f of u equals a times u. Okay. Um, what we'll see later, we're going to consider more complicated functions. Um, so this is just a simple linear function, but if the function is nonlinear, then things get a little bit more complicated. Okay. And this is also called the transport. This is the transport equation. Okay, because your solution is just the transportation of the initial data. Okay, so that's all for this video.